All right, last section in Chapter 3, and I'm sure you're sitting here thinking, what the heck, I've already seen this slide, we've already went over this slide. Well, I want to get out the periodic table because what we're going to do is we're going to talk about really three categories or groups on the periodic table today. Uh, three categories or groups. And I kind of want to show them to you in advance. So I'm going to talk about the steps on the periodic table. And essentially, the steps on the periodic table, you'll notice if you have your green sheet of, all right, go just like that. There's a black line that goes right down just like that. So I'm really going to refer to three sets today. I'm going to refer to anything to the left of the steps, which is all of this. except hydrogen. Hydrogen's the exception of the rule. Hydrogen really should be over here, but we'll talk about that. So I'm going to talk about everything to the left of the steps. So this is all of this in black. I'm going to talk about everything to the right of the steps, which is all of this in red. And then I'm going to talk about everything under the steps, which is essentially green. So we're going to talk about those three categories today. To the left of the steps, to the right of the steps, and underneath the steps. So, if we talk about that, we are going to talk about things to the left of the steps. And we're going to classify everything to the left of the steps is known as the metals. So any element to the left of the steps is a metal. Copper, iron, nickel, those are all metals. You guys know that. Those kind of make sense to you. But what about other ones? Sodium, calcium, potassium. Those are all metals too. And if we look at the periodic table, what do those elements have in common? Well, metals share common characteristics. And what are metals? Metals are great conductors of heat and electricity. They're also solids at room temperature. All of those things are solids at room temperature. Iron, nickel, gold, silver, calcium, they're all solids at room temperature. Most metals are malleable. All right. What is malleable? Malleable means bendable. All right. Malleable means I can bend it. They're bendable. You can bend most metals pretty easily, in fact. So malleable means bendable. Next up, some metal, or they are also ductile. What does ductile mean? It means it can be pulled into wire. Well, what, what is every wire in your house made out of? Some type of metal, probably copper, or otherwise. Sometimes electronics will use gold wiring. So uh, metals are great for bending, and they're ductile. They're great for making into wire because they're great. Again, they're great conductors of heat and electricity. What else do we have? Some metals are extremely reactive, while others do not react well. And we'll talk about that. Some of the metals on the way left-hand side of the periodic table are super reactive, like sodium. Sodium and potassium are super reactive. But then we go to the middle of the table, and we have an element like copper or zinc, which aren't very reactive at all unless they're put into extreme conditions. So everything to the left of the steps is the metals. Then... We're going to talk about everything to the right of the steps. And everything to the right of the steps are non-metals. And a lot of these elements are gases at room temperature. Oxygen, nitrogen, right, fluorine. All, all, right, all, uh, all non-metals. Carbon is a non-metal, even though it's a solid at room temperature. But we go through properties of non-metals. Non-metals are the exact opposite of metals. Nonmetals are poor conductors of heat and electricity. They have very low boiling points, which means that most of them are gases at room temperature. Uh, it, if it does exist as a solid, it tends to be very brittle. For example, carbon is a solid. Right? Carbon usually exists as graphite. That is what's used in your pencil. All right? Can you break your pencil? How many times a day do you break a pencil at? All right, pretty often. So it is pretty, uh, it's pretty brittle. And when I say lead, I mean graphite. I don't mean the actual compound lead. 
And there's a large variation in reactivity. Some of these gases are very reactive while others aren't at all. And we'll kind of get into why some are and why some aren't. So the nonmetals are to the right of the steps. The metals were to the left of the steps. What about the elements underneath the steps? And it's only a handful of me metals underneath the steps, but we kind of call them the metalloids. And why do they have to be the, called the metalloids? Is really they have some properties of metals and some properties of nonmetals. And it's the elements that are highlighted in orange. The conductivity depends on temperature. So their electrical conductivity depends on temperature. And pretty much the metalloids have some characteristics of metals and some characteristics of nonmetals. Now, I'm going to classify the metalloids as any element under the steps just to simplify the process. So on the first slide when I did any element underneath the steps, those are metalloids. To the right of the steps are nonmetals. To the left of the steps are metals. Uh, and that is going to wrap up that is going to wrap up section 3.5 talking about metals, nonmetals, and metalloids. If you have questions, please come in and ask. This is Mr. Clenert, and I'm out.